All right, hi ladies. So I understand you guys have to make your face masks and then Gozi got you your fabrics and everything. So first thing we got to do is understand the pattern a little bit. I don't have a printer, so I ended up making it by hand on, pa on pattern paper. So again, it's seven and three quarters wide by seven and a half inches high. So seven and three quarters across, seven and a half uh, lengthwise. And um, there's three pleats. Again, that's three pleats that are an inch or half an inch deep. So that means you can see here, this line matches up with that one and so on for the other pleats. Make sure that your pleats are going down. So for example, if this was the nose, the pleats are going down towards the chin. Um, so also it's cut two of the self fabric. And uh, I believe you guys have shirting, so that means it's going to be fairly thin. It won't be too bulky. And then also there's four notches on the corners. That's where the elastic is going to go. On the pattern itself, it's a little dot if you end up printing it out yourself. Um, but in this case, I made notches instead, so then that way we know where to put the edge of the elastic. So I'll zoom in a little bit here. So right here, it's about half an inch away from the edge of the corner. So that's where the elastic's gonna go. That's where the edge of the elastic's gonna go. I think you guys are gonna be getting a quarter inch wide elastic. So yeah. And then a little thing about setup here is that I put five pieces of tape on my table. So when I get to making the pleats, it's pretty uniform without having to use pins or basting or too much, well, too much basting or too much chalk. Because again, this is going to be sold to a lot of people or given to a lot of people. Um, make sure that they kind of correlate with the pattern itself. So what I ended up doing was using tape because I don't want to mark up my table or anything. Uh, I used tape and then I drew or I marked on the, the tape itself. So also I created a little fold here so then that way it's easy to peel off later. So you can see here that I'm lining up pretty much the top edge where the seam allowance is. So remember after it's flipped inside out, this is going to be your finished edge. And then this is where your elastic is going to be coming out of. And then these guys right here are going to be your pleats. All right, so now that you understand the pattern and a little bit of a setup on your little workstation, I'll talk about the pattern pieces next. Or the cut fabric and the elastic next. Okay, so now that we understand the pattern, Let's go ahead and talk about the cut pieces after everything is said and done. I have here my two pieces, which are just simple muslin. I believe you guys have cotton shirting. So again, two pieces. On shirting, it's a little tricky to identify what's the face of the fabric and what's the wrong side of the fabric. So make sure you identify that first so that way you know what's going to be on the outside and what's going to be the wrong side of the uh, face mask and then I don't have elastic so I have ribbon I have grow grain ribbon for this demo so again you guys will get elastic and I have ribbon so on the instructions for the on the pdf that you guys will get along with the pattern that Ngozi will send you the um, measurement is supposed to be I believe seven inches for the elastic to be cut out um, and then also, again, on my pattern, I have the little notches cut out here. So again, notches are our friend because they tell us where we're supposed to be going. So again, when I'm saying the edge of the elastic, just remember, it'll go here. So we'll just line up the edge of the elastic up against the notch. Another tip also when you are cutting out your fabric, since we should treat this a little bit more of a production run. So as you're doing this, maybe have um, someone help you out, cut out the elastic. So I believe you guys got 10 yards each. So for example, since these are simple squares, be super economic with how you lay out the pattern. Cut out maybe 
a set of 10 or a little bit more just so that you have production runs going at the same time because if you make each piece individually it can get a little tedious and then you'll have um you'll build up bad habits that could lead to like little errors or mistakes again these guys are going to be going out to um a lot of people so you might want um you for sure want to make this as professional and as clean as possible so again do chunks of seven inch cut elastic i believe it's seven inches again um double check what it says on the pdf on the file and then again do a good economic um layout on the fabric since it is simple squares you can cut this on the fold you don't want to cut this one ply so Cut this on the fold so then that way you could lay it out and still have a lot of good um, integrity in your cutout pieces. Uh, let's see what else. So yeah, go ahead and make sure you, I would do this again in batches as opposed to one-offs each time. Okay, so what I have here is one of the pieces that's going to be the primary, I guess, the one facing out towards everyone else. So here, just to identify what side is the right side, I put face. So again, that's the face of the fabric, not your actual face. And what I have here is the ribbon, which is supposed to be your elastic. Again, I'm substituting elastic with ribbon in my situation. So remember those notches that I was talking about? The edge of the elastic should match up to the edge of the notch right there so what we're going to be doing is we'll be basting these guys in place so same thing goes on down here pardon my cuticles they're gross um again same thing on the other side there's a little notch and the same thing up here in on the other corner so we'll just be basting these guys in place at a quarter inch seam allowance and again, when I was saying doing these in batches, so imagine if you already have 10 sets cut out, you will be doing the basting of the elastic 10 times in a row. So then that way you don't have to reset your machine to a smaller stitch again and again and again if you're doing this individually. So again, if you do this in batches, you'll keep your mindset um, pretty robotic, which will help out with um, keeping it more in a production assembly line mentality. One more thing I forgot to mention was that you can see the way I have folded or twisted my ribbon or elastic in place is to avoid having it twist and spiral around. So if you remember on the tote bag you guys made early on in um, the training course, how you had to make sure your straps didn't twist around and stuff. So this is how I have my um, my elastic ribbon substitute pinned in place. Okay, so before you start sewing, for basting again, it's pretty simple. Make sure your stitches are set to the longest length possible. In my case, it's a five. I'm not too sure about your machines. Um, also, make sure your tension is set up properly. In my case, I'm just going to use the auto. So um, it's pretty basic. Again, it's just cotton shirting. The thread, make sure your thread is the right kind of thread. I, um, I believe it should just be like 100% polyester. And then also for your needle, make sure your needle isn't too thin. I mean, thin isn't bad, but if it's too thick, like for example, if it's a size like 16 needle or something, it might end up making too big of a hole on your fabric. I'm not too sure. I haven't handled that shirting that you guys have. But if it's too thin, it's not too bad. But if it's too thick, like a size 16 or 18 or whatever, that might be a little too thick. So anything smaller, 14 and below would be fine. Um, I'm going to be using black thread just so you guys can see everything as I'm sewing. And yeah, that's it for setup. Also, of course, obviously make sure it's the right kind of presser foot. Don't use like a zipper foot or anything. Um, also make sure you're well aware of where your seam allowance guides are. In my case, 
the edge of the presser feet or the feed dog right here the spiky little guys down here that's at a quarter of an inch seam allowance the pattern only calls for a quarter inch seam allowance so um shouldn't be too confusing since there's only one seam allowance for the entire project All right, so I am about to baste the elastic onto the uh, face mask, the first layer of the face mask. So again, just make sure your notches are lined up. I already removed my pin because you shouldn't be sewing right over your pins. But again, since the elastic is going to be fairly thin, you should be handling it with your fingers as opposed to relying totally on pins because it'll be too thin anyway. But again, it's just basting and no back stitching because you might want to remove these stitches if they get in the way or if they show up on the outside later on so again just basting so it's going to be a quarter inch seam allowance and i like to make sure my elastic is going to be anchored in place first before putting the foot down again you guys have a quarter inch seam, um, quarter inch wide elastic so maybe won't have as many stitches as I do, but again, no back stitching. So this is gonna be super redundant if you wanna move on. Fast forward or move on to the next video, go right ahead. But again, I'll do all four on camera just for fun. Also another thing, make sure that your elastic doesn't go too far out because then you're going to end up making your elastic too short. Also, my elastic was not fully lined up with my notch. So again, make sure your ribbon, well in my case my ribbon or your elastic is totally lined up because you want to make these guys as uniform as possible. Good habits ladies. Now is not the time for shortcuts. So again, treating this as a production run, you'll be making, if you made batches, this will keep your mindset pretty much on the same pace for each step. So I believe on the PDF, this is step one. So imagine if you cut out 10 sets and you've pinned 10 sets of the elastic onto the first layer of the face mask, you'll be doing this repetitively that way, that way you have a repetitive, just like what I'm saying, pretty repetitive, but a repetitive assembly line procedure thing going on. So you will have loose ends and whatever. If you want to trim it, go right ahead because most likely they will find their way out into the exterior. But if you're pretty good about moving it out of the way, so be it. But um, yeah, just make sure they're not exposed when you are um, with your finished product. So again, let me zoom out so you can see where you're at. So next is step two on the PDF file and that's attaching the other piece of the face mask. Okay, so now that we have our elastics basted on, I will go ahead and attach the other piece of the mask. 
So again, just to identify what side is the face of the fabric, I wrote it on here so that way we know what's what. So identify the right side of the fabric. So again, right sides facing each other. And since both pieces of the fabric should have notches, make sure to just line up, oops, excuse me, to line up your notches with each other. So just to prove that your elastic is not going to be out of place. So again, it's pretty uniform. You can kind of see your notches on both sides. And then you will go ahead and pin, not too much, so maybe one on each side. It's, again, it's just a square. But if you feel a little paranoid that's going to be slippery too much, go ahead and use a little bit, a few more pins, but um, nothing too crazy. Okay, so what I have here is my two pieces already pinned to each other, right sides facing each other. This should be step two on the PDF. Again, like I said, production method. So do this in chunks. So again, if you had like 10 cut out, you'll have 10 of these ready to go. So then all you have to do is run these guys through the machine. So again, the seam allowance is going to be a quarter inch um, seam allowance. We have to have a opening down here at the bottom. So if you remember the tote bag, uh, the tote bag lining, there was like that big opening on the lining for you guys to flip the bag inside out and then seal up later. So we'll leave like a four inch gap right here, like where my two fingers are. Um, and then we'll start from this corner, go down over here, pivot, up and over, pivot, up and over, pivot here again. Sew it down, pivot, and then we'll stop somewhere here. Just enough for you to flip it inside out through that little hole. So it's a quarter inch seam allowance. Another warning do I have, that I have to tell you about is that make sure your notches aren't too big. Because if you do deep notches, again, if you do deep notches, it'll show up on the outside. But since our seam allowance is going to be pretty thin, uh, it's a pretty narrow seam allowance, you don't want to have like a little tear because one, if they use it and then it tears up, that's embarrassing. And also that means the mask won't work. So again, make sure your notches aren't too deep when cutting it out. All right, so now I have my fabric ready to go. I will have to backstitch on this one. Now that you are gonna be sewing the two pieces together, Make sure your machine is set up to the right stitch length. I do mine at two and a half, um, just so that I'll be able to make sure I can pivot the corners pretty well. Because again, if your stitches are too long, you might end up skipping that quarter inch pivot mark down here in the corner. Um, so yeah, so because we also don't want to be sewing this at um, basting stitch length at five or four or whatever. So again, we're going to start off with a back stitch. And making sure everything stays at a quarter inch seam allowance. So make sure you identify on your presser foot or whatever helps you identify what the quarter inch seam allowance is when you hit the corner. So again, just a reminder for pivoting, you leave your needle down in the fabric like what I have here. Lift the presser foot, pivot around the corner, and then continue on your merry way to the next corner. Uh, another thing here too is you can kind of feel where the elastic is. You don't want to run over the elastic because if you do, that means you got a seam rip. So the less seam, the less seam ripping the better. So you can kind of see that I left a pin here to keep the elastic out of the way or my ribbon.
Feel free to fast forward because I'm just sewing. See, again, um, you can kind of see this right here, the elastic might get in the way, so just be super conscious of where your elastic is laying in this sandwich of fabric. Yep. So the elastic should be out of my way. Just a little paranoid that it might not be. Because my ribbon is fairly thick, it's more susceptible to getting caught. Like I said, don't run over your pins before you end up breaking a needle. I almost ran over my ribbon. I hope not. Please say no. Everything's lined up properly. Also, my cutting wasn't the best. Ignore that. Please fast forward. <laughs> so now that we're at the end, make sure you don't seal off where we started. So again, have like a four or three inch opening. And make sure to backstitch at the end. Alright, so what I have here is the two pieces sewn together. Um, you can kind of see where we had the basting stitches. If they fall over, I mean since they're just basted, we can just pull it out. Um, make sure to don't make any runs or damages to the fabric. So when you do pull it out, just be a little careful. Like this guy right here is exposed. So again, it's just basted. So we can always take that out later. Um, let's see. And then you see down here, there's the opening. So before we do flip it inside out, we're still on step two. So on the PDF, it says to clip your corners. So then that way, when you do flip it inside out and start to press everything, we can have nice, pretty, sharp corners. All right, so I have my corners clipped. One little thing that I should have mentioned earlier, when you're clipping your corners, make sure you don't get too close to the edge because once you flip it out and you poke it out a little bit too much, it might end up fraying and expose a hole. So don't get too greedy with how you how close you get to your stitching over here. This should be good enough. That's about like an eighth of an inch. Again, excuse my cuticles, they're kind of gross. Um, yeah, so then we'll be, we'll be flipping out everything through here. All right, so now I have my face mask. Um, totally flipped it inside out and then I used a the blunt point of my scissors to poke out the four corners and then I also kind of ran it along the seam allowance of the straight edges just so it really scoots all the seam allowance out so then that way we could get a nice clean fold so Remember, we're going to be doing some pressing here just to make sure it looks totally professional. Again, these will all be sent out to people who really need them. So the prettier it is, the better. Also for functionality's sake. But when we're for the little opening here, just to get it um, set in place, we'll be 
obviously doing a lot of finger pressing because that helps out a lot. So again, we'll be pressing this before we do our edge stitch. Okie dokie ladies, so now we're going to go ahead and press it. I'm going to make sure my iron has some steam in it, so some water, make sure it doesn't spit because some irons end up spitting a little bit. Uh, so just make sure it's a fully functioning iron without any errors. So again, really making sure the edges are pressed. I would get a better press in after I do this quick little demo, mainly because I only have two hands, but you get the point. Also, the main important part is to really get the opening nice and actually pressed, not with your fingers, but with an iron. So then that way when we do run the machine through it, it's pretty sharp. So the next step after you're done pressing is to edge stitch all the way around, really just to seal this, but to make sure that there's no dimples on the sewn edges of the mask. All right, so now that we're back at the machine, we're gonna be sewing this all at a 1 8 seam allowance because we're edge stitching. So in this case, on my machine, it's where my thumbnail's at, this inner edge of the presser foot. So I like to do mine at the corner because no one will really be seeing the corner so if there's going to be any bulk in thread it's going to be off to the side where no one's really going to see it once it's put up on someone's face so i believe this is step number three on the pdf so again, we're not going to backstitch on this one, mainly because we'll be running over everything after we lap it. One more stitch. There we go. So... Now that we're getting around to where the opening is, if we have a 1 8 seam allowance or the edge stitch, it should catch everything. Probably should have buffed my nails before doing this video. Again, you see right here, when you're pressing it, you want to avoid these little dimples where it kind of folds itself back in to itself. So when you're pressing it, you want to make sure these guys are pushed out as much as possible because you don't want this little dimple. You should be seeing the stitches on the inside of this right here. So it should be really pushed out as far out as possible. Excuse me. Like this guy right here would be a good example of a properly pressed edge. We see where the dimple's not too deep. So then that way it's nice and flat and there's no wasted space being formed into a dimple. One more stitch. There we go.
All right, so since we're getting close to where we started again, what I've mentioned about not having to backstitch is because we'll be running over where we started. Clean this up a little bit. There we go. So just make sure that they connect. You can kind of see it right here, this little hole on your presser foot to make sure that they actually did connect. I'm going to go ahead and loop through the corner one more time just to make sure it's a solid seal. Again, if you're doing this in the batches of 10 or so or whatever, so long as it's more than one-offs, you'll be able to identify where your little quirks are when you're doing your little runs to avoid um, little repeated errors. All right, so this is what the end of step three should look like. Again, I started off here in this little corner. That's why you see the little overlap and the little bunching of thread, a little thickness. But then you make your way all the way through. Try not to get that little bump over here. You might end up running into a little bit of trouble, just a tiny bit, mainly because there's a lot of thickness here in the corner because it's pretty much the convergence of two seam allowances. So it might get a little thick over there. Uh, I think mine bunched up a little bit because my needle was too thick. But again, I think I have a size 14 on right now. If you have a size um, 12 or 11 or something, you should be okay. But yeah, that's the corners are where you'll run into a little bit of trouble. If you do run into them, just make sure you're kind of helping the feed dog feed your stitching. Don't force it, but obviously help it push through a little bit. Because if not, it might just end up being squished a little bit and you'll have tighter stitches. And you can kind of see it right there. Obviously, you want to avoid that. Um, let's see what else. Um, so, you can see here the opening has now been sealed. No one will really pay attention to that, especially if you pressed it properly. It should be pretty well sandwiched. So let's just go ahead and flip it over to the other side just, for, just to see what's going on. So yeah, this is what the end of step three should look like. Okay, so what I have here now is the beginning of step four on the PDF. And like I said earlier, where I set up the tape on my workstation, is to identify where the pleats are going to be. So you can kind of see here that the corners meet where the tape is. If yours end up shrinking a little, uh, shrinking a little bit, mainly because you probably didn't press out well enough when you when you pressed out the edges or the corners of your... Um, mask during step three, between step three and step two at the iron. So again, that's why it's super important to make sure that you have all your edges pressed out nice and flat as possible. Um, let's see what else is next. Okay, so the next step is to, we don't want to mark with chalk, maybe with pinning, but if you do have chalk, it might end up leaving a stain on the fabric, which is an absolute no-no. So again, we should probably just use this. You don't want to use any other marking tools, again, to avoid any staining. So for example, we'll just have to make sure that these two edges end up forming the pleat. So somehow, maybe with pins or something, you'll identify where the edges of the pleat should go. So again, if you're doing these in batches, you'll be able to do this. Like for example, you just pin the six um, edges of the pleats. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Those six pins will identify where the pleating has to go. All right, with the help of the little tapes, uh, taped onto my workstation. This is kind of what I was talking about in the other chunk of the video was that you match up these guys again going down. This is the nose going down towards the chin. So you match up this to this 
this to this and this to this. So you have about like a half inch difference between the three right here. So there's like a half inch space. Um, again, it's a half an inch deep. And then also the other thing too is my muslin is a little bit thick. It's a, actually it's a cotton twill. And that's why it seems pretty dense on the video. You guys will have a cotton shirting. It'll be a lot thinner than my fabric. Therefore, it should be easier to pleat. And also, your machine shouldn't have too much of a problem poking through all the layers. Because you can kind of see this is, this guy is pretty dense because it's a cotton twill. So that's like the same fabric for like chinos and stuff. So it's going to be pretty dense on the needle for when you run it through the machine. Well, at least for me. So again, this is what it should look like before. You got your little half inch space between, and then these one inch um, pleats right here. So once it's folded, it, again, it'll be about a half inch deep. So again, from this, from this pin down to this one, this one down to this one, this one down to this one. This one down to this one, I meant. So before, after. All right, so now that both sides are pleated, this is what it should look like afterwards. So again, this guy is pretty thick because the fabric is cotton twill. Um, again, if you were to look at it, the inside of the pleats should be going up towards the nose, that's how it should look like, uh, because once it fully expands, it'll kind of open up, like what you see all over the place nowadays. But again, we'll run this through the iron before we start sewing it. So when I say running it through the iron, we are, we won't go through these guys first because if you press it with the pin in you might be steaming the entrance and the exit hole of the pin in place and that should that could lead to an ugly little boo-boo so probably better to just press the middle to give the fabric some memory Just like that. And then the instructions say to baste it in place. If that'll help you, great. But that might eat up more time than you want. Again, if you're doing this in production batches, just like how we basted these guys in place in one whole run, I guess you can do the same thing. But whichever one you're more comfortable with. So if you're comfortable with sewing the next step in place with the pins in, great. If you want to base it just for security's sake, go ahead and do so. But I will run this through the machine with just the pins and steaming it in place. All right, so just for demonstration's sake and to follow along with the PDF's instructions, one side I will go ahead and baste it in place so I have my machine already set up at stitch length five and the basing is just to seal the pleats down without the help of pins because again pins can get in the way but in this case they're keeping our pleats in place for the time being so the machine um the instructions say to sew it in at a half an inch seam allowance this basting because we don't want to run over it again but there we go. So that's a half an inch now. So again, we're not back stitching, it's just basting. Let's pray that the thickness won't get too thick for my machine. Again, you guys have um you guys have cotton shirting, so it shouldn't be too thick. One thing to pay attention to when you get to this point is to make sure your edges over here stay straight. You don't want it all lumpy. It looks lumpy over here on the camera because it's just so damn thick with all this 
that's like what six layers of fabric of cotton twill it's gonna get pretty dense so it looks a little awkward on camera but trust me it's not too bad but again this is also just tasting so Alright, so for this side, I won't remove the pins and I won't baste either. So if you feel confident enough or when you finally get to that point in the rhythm of your sewing and you're super confident because you've done this like 30 times already, go ahead and just sew it without basting. So again, making sure this guy stays straight on camera looks pretty weird, but we will just sew this in at a quarter inch seam allowance. So again, I'll start from the corner, making sure to back stitch because this is going to be a permanent stitch, not the basting stitch on like the other side, but it'll be permanent stitching. So I have my stitches returned to um, two and a half. So you can kind of see here we're starting to get a little thick. Again, you guys shouldn't have that problem because you have cotton shirting. So shirting fabric again would be used on like button down shirts. And that's pretty much it. That's why it's called cotton shirting. So once you've completed those three guys, go all the way up and over. And when you get to the edge, don't forget to backstitch to seal it in place. All right, let's go ahead and do that to same thing to the other side, making sure all of the thread is out of the way. I mean, we'll clip it anyway, but still. Again, it's a quarter inch seam allowance, starting from the corner. Making sure that the presser foot and the feed dog doesn't scooch your pleats around too much because then that just ruins everything. Hmm. Making sure all that thread is out of the way. There we go. All right, so this is how it should look like. Please ignore all of this unfortunateness. Um, this looks a little wobbly, mainly because the thickness of the cotton twill led to some little wonkiness over here. But again, you get the point of having the last quarter inch um, stay stitching over here at the edge. That is pretty much step four and step five. So again, same thing over here. So this is what it should look like when it's all said and done. So if you press it in place, it'll give the pleats a nice finished professional look. Since you guys will have a thinner fabric, your machine should cooperate a lot better than mine did. So yeah, here you go. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, if you do this all in batches, you'll avoid repeating the same mistakes over and over again if, as opposed to doing this one by one. So if you do all of these guys in batches of doing the same step repeatedly over and over again, it should help uh, remove any bad habits. So good luck, happy sewing, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. So yeah.